College Football is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com or your local dealer. By Remax, the sign you want, the agent you need. And by Old Chicago Restaurants. Eat, drink, and be yourself. Beautiful day on the front range of Colorado. That's Horse Tooth Reservoir outside of Fort Collins, and it is uh, kind of quiet right now because most folks are here to watch Colorado State, the hometown team, take on Boise State. All right, Todd Christensen is here, and Todd, let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Well, Boise State leads the nation in third down prevention at 24%. Third and thanks for coming. If they can continue to do that, they will dictate the course of this game. Martinizing, as per my partner, down on the field, Roger Bailey pointed out that Doug Martin has an opportunity for a very big day. Two weeks ago, terrible day throwing the ball. They gave it to Martin, ran for over 120 yards. On the Colorado State side, run for your life. Absolutely, they have to establish some semblance of a running game. Last week, they only had 71 yards rushing. That is not going to get it done against the Broncos today. More for less, I just mentioned that two weeks ago. 144 yards passing for Kellen Moore against the University of Nevada. The worst statistical game of his career. Somehow, the Colorado State defense would love to force a replication of those numbers. Well, let's introduce you to the head coaches. Of course, Chris Peterson uh, has had an unbelievable run during his time as uh, the head coach at Boise State. 66 and 5, Todd. 93% winning percentage. Just an incredible uh, run of success. And, and not unlike his coaching buddy, Gary Peterson, I think one of the reasons why he turns down a lot of those other jobs is because he has helped establish what he has there in Boise. And Steve Fairchild is in his fourth season as the head coach at his alma mater, Colorado State University. He is trying to replicate here in Fort Collins what has been done north of here in Boise Idaho there have been some struggles along the way after going to a bowl game in his first season here in Fort Collins back-to-back -back three and nine campaigns three wins already this year thought that they might be able to be four and one coming into here the only loss prior to last their last game was to Colorado in the neighborhood rivalry but a very very disappointing game two weeks ago against San Jose State losing that game by a score of 38 to 31 after they had battled back from 20 Four, seven down and of course there he is Kellen Moore he's the quarterback he's the captain he's one of the best the college game has ever seen 43 victories second all-time in NCAA history what a tremendous representative in the position as a quarterback and as a captain on a football team and just a terrific young man and a joy to watch well again this, this is one of the reasons why and you and I have discussed this Bill in the past you used to give Heisman trophies for careers I'm inclined that if they were to do that 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 young man who will be the winning his quarterback in FBS history might get the award. Boise State won the toss to Ferg. Colorado State receives. The Rams are in all white today, and this is Derek Good taking it out of the end zone and coming up just shy of the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Rams at their own 19. And there's Pete Thomas. He's the sophomore quarterback. There are, there's a lot of pressure on this young man because he is the quarterback that was targeted by Steve Fairchild and, and company to put this program on his shoulders. He started game one as a true freshman. Now he's in his second season. The numbers are pretty good, Ty, but the way he has produced that has not been all that dynamic. Well, and he hasn't got a lot of help from his running game, and today they really need to rise to the occasion. Raymond Carter gets the uh, start at the tailback position. We'll see him and Chris Woke as well. A lot of movement on the Rams side before the first play. And this is the pitch to Raymond Carter, bringing it near side and getting across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Billy Wynn made the stop. We'll say that quite a bit. He's an All-America candidate. Mads does a nice job of leading out front and a good cutback by Carter to get past against that pursuit. Boise State has a lot of speed. The offensive line, I say a little pressure is on them because they're four out of five starters returning for 2011, but as yet, they really have not established themselves either run or pass because coming into this game, Thomas had been sacked 13 times. Pete Thomas went to the sideline there to give him the right page of his wristband. Seven seconds to make the snap. It's second down and five. And a deep handoff. And this is Carter again, working his end one. And another handoff to Carter. And that handoff was very, very deep, and that allowed that blue wall to set up. And 
Carter really had no chance, and there's no gain on the play, and Colorado State on fourth and one is going to have to punt it away, you would imagine. You understand what Colorado State is trying to do because they don't want to seed the idea that these guys are a little tougher than us up front, but that was a great opportunity for a play-action pass because everybody was jammed in there, and they had man-for-man -man coverage on all of the players. That would have been a good chance to get Crockett Gilmore the ball, the guy that you had just mentioned earlier. Gained about a half yard. I wonder if there was some temptation to try and pick up the final 18 inches, but instead Steve Fairchild is going to punt it away with Pete Contadiakis. Good leg, good boot here, although he was punting into the wind. This is Mitch Burroughs handling it at the 32-yard line. He retreats a yard. Good coverage by the Colorado State punt return team. A 40-yard kick from Contadiakis. Todd, that has to be a disappointing opening series for CSU because they desperately wanted to hold on to the football and have some long drives because now they're turning it over to Kellen Moore. Yeah, three and out is not what the doctor ordered. And of course, one of the things that Boise State does so well is start fast. You see those numbers. Astonishing two years ago, I remember, as a sophomore, he had 39 touchdowns and only three interceptions. So he's taking a step back with 17 TDs and four picks. <laughs> First and 10 from the Bronco 31, and they swing it out of the backfield. This is Martin. May have picked up a yard, if any. Good swarming defense by Colorado State. Mike Arakpo and Shaquille Barrett, the linebackers, combined to make the stop. One of the struggles that Colorado State had against San Jose State was their tackling in the open field. That was something that Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator, emphasized that they worked on during the bye week, and they did an excellent job there in the flat on Martin. So gain of one, second down and nine. Martin again. And it looks like he may have enough to pick up a first down. Forward progress to the 42-yard line. And that's Melbourne Market. And the Boise State drive continues. Take a look at the Boise State starting lineup. 100 starts amongst this offensive line who really have established themselves. Remember, coming into this game, Kellen Moore has been sacked only once in 165 passing attempts. We talked about Martin. Somebody else who's been making a lot of plays is the freshman, Matt Miller, who leads the team in receiving. First and 10 from the 42. More, plenty of time. Receiver wide open over the middle, and that's going to be another first down. Matt Miller on the connection. Barrett gets the uh, stop, and here's the Colorado State D. Well, we talk about Cappy and all the things that he's done, but if Wilson and Brown don't get a push, Cappy has no shot of getting to the quarterback. Shaquille Barrett has been a big find and a great story, having come from Nebraska, Omaha, who no longer plays football. A lot of pressure now on Momo Thomas and Elijah Blue Smith on the corners as a result of the prowess of number 11, Kellen Moore. And even though we're just about four minutes into this game, Todd, this is not a good start for Colorado State at what it wanted to do. Moore takes the handoff, rolls to his left. That pass is complete to his tight end, and that's going to get another Bronco first down. James Skelton with the tackle. That complete to the tight end, uh, or the wide receiver, big pardon, Tyler Shoemaker. Well, Tyler Shoemaker, they just do a great job of misdirection. You can see the, the white shirts that go the wrong direction. Shoemaker is just wide open, makes a, a nice cut in the middle of the field. Shoemaker has been a, a go-to guy all, all season long for Boise State. Made a lot of plays in 2010 as well. Shoemaker has six touchdowns already this season. This is Martin. Best defensive play of the game so far for Colorado State. Shaq Barrett again, the linebacker, making the stick. Interesting combination of Barrett. He plays the inside backer position, but on third down, puts his hand down and becomes a pass rusher. Watch number 56 penetrate, and that's what you call the clinic tackle. Shoulders underneath, even though Martin is five foot nine, Barrett's able to get lower and drop him in his tracks. Second down and 10, no gain on the play. The ball at the Ram 32-yard line. More to the air again. This is Shoemaker again. And the pass is complete at the Ram 26-yard line. Skelton with the tackle. And so far, there have been some pretty good tackles made by Colorado State, which was a point of emphasis. Well, we discussed Larry Kerr, and here are the three keys that he said. Don't be hesitant to attack because you've got friends that are going to follow behind you. Head up, bring your feet. That's exactly what Barrett did. And to know where your help is, the sideline is your friend, and so are the pursuers from the inside. More often than not, you want somebody to cut back against the grain because that's where the defenders are. Big play here, third down and four. The ball at the 26. 
Martin straight up the middle, has the first down and a whole lot more. In fact, he's got a touchdown. 26-yard touchdown run for Doug Martin, and what a perfect mix of pass and run on that drive by Boise State, marching right down the field on the opening drive. Just as, just as, just as, we, get, just as we talk about the tackling, watch number 43, Skelton, and then Gray in the secondary as he backs up. He gets caught, gets blocked. Now watch Gray, just gets fooled completely. Martin with the sweet feet, able to go in and touch for the touchdown. Point after try is good. Dan Goodale, Goodale is the uh, kicker, and Boise State looking like the fifth-ranked team in the country. Very impressively, a seven-play drive results in a touchdown. It's 7-0 Broncos over the Rams on the mountain. Welcome back to Fort Collins. This drive summary is brought to you by Jeep. Visit jeep.com or your local dealer. Seven plays covered 69 yards in three minutes and 16 seconds. It was culminated by Doug Martin's 26-yard touchdown run, and here it is. Take a look right here at Skelton, and then in the secondary, take a look at Gray. First of all, Skelton is the one that gets caught up, can't make the play, and then Gray, we just talked about, don't hesitate. He hesitates, and he who hesitates is, well, in this case, fooled, not lost. But the result is the same, touchdown, Boise State. Kellen Moore was four for four for 32 yards on that drive. Lee Club and Derek Good deep to receive the kick from Harmon. And Harmon kicking with the wind at his back sends Good deep into the end zone, and he won't bring it out. First down and 10 for the Rams at their own 20-yard line, and this is the defense that Pete Thomas and company are facing. Really impressive is Boise State's defense. It, up front, you have McClellan, who has 17 sacks in his career. That's in the top 10 of the active players in, uh, in the FBS. Byron Hout is somebody who mans the middle and does an outstanding job. Tevis is more of a playmaker. And in the secondary, the two leading tacklers on the team, believe it or not, are cornerbacks at 23 tackles. A piece. And they're not all that concerned about it. Most teams would be. Not the case. Chris Woke is the tailback for this drive for Colorado State. We saw Raymond Carter earlier. Thomas to the air. That pass is complete. Crockett Gilmore, the tight end, sneaking out for a three-yard gain. He's now caught a pass in six consecutive games. Jamar Taylor made the stop. And Jamar Taylor, the cornerback there at 5'11", 196, you notice that he didn't hesitate. We were talking about the, we were talking about the tackling earlier. Taylor just comes up despite the fact that he's 5'11", 195 against the 6'6", 240-pounder. And the result is a fairly short gain of only four. Thomas to the air again, has time, and that pass is caught and dropped. Blake Jones, the other tight end, had it in his hands. Check it. It's 34, not 84. Joe Brown. Aaron Tevis, the linebacker, whom they told us earlier this week has been playing pretty well. I would have to agree. I, I, have, to, I have to tell you, as somebody who has to, who made my living in the middle, <laughs> you, did, you didn't do any favors here. See the super slow motion. You're running right into this. This collision, you know, you, you don't get to slow down because of the throw. He leads you right into it, and as a result, Tevis gets that knockout shot the defenders crave. Joe Brown has been somewhat of a feature in the passing game uh, for Colorado State out of the fullback spot. He may not want to do that anymore. There's a pass that is lofted out to Raymond Carter. He had a step on the defender, and the ball is too far out in front. It falls incomplete. And for the second time in this game, Colorado State has to punt it away on a short drive. This is unfortunate because Thomas had what he wanted. He had man-for-man -man coverage with the middle linebacker and a much faster Carter. You see the numbers that we documented at the top of the show. First, and of course the first two series have both been three and outs. The Boise State defense on this season, Bill, has averaged almost seven three and outs per game. That's unbelievable. Conta Diakas standing at his nine. No pressure on him. Again, punting into the win. Burroughs lets it bounce. And this takes a bit of a Colorado State roll down inside the 25. It'll be down to the 22. And Boise State with a 7-0 lead will take over with 8.21 left to play in the opening quarter. Gosh, it's a beautiful day out here in Colorado. And a great start for Boise State in its first ever Mountain West Conference game. 7-0 is our score midway through the first quarter. The out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by REMAX, the sign you want, the agent you need. 
On Thursday night, San Diego State rebounded after its loss to TCU the previous week in just five days rest, 41-27. And earlier today, UNLV went to Laramie and wishes it hadn't. So Kellen Moore and company have it first and 10 from the Bronco 21. Here's Martin, his fourth carry of the game. A beautiful spin to get away from one tackler and pick up big time yards and another Bronco first down. Stopped finally at the 35 yard line. A gain of 13 on the play, 14 yards. It's interesting, that's about the third time he's gone with the Barishnikov spin, but the th third time was certainly a charm. He gets to the outside and Shoemaker does a great job of blocking for him. And now they're hurrying up the pace. Three receivers to the near side, and this is Martin again off the left side, and again he's got himself a big gain, and perhaps another touchdown. It's a sprint to the end zone, and Martin wins that race. Another touchdown for the Bronco running back. That was a combination of two factors right there. Obviously, it was a well-blocked play. But they went into their hurry up and Colorado State was not prepared. For whatever reason, you can see that they're not set, they're not prepared. Martin cuts to the outside. There's a blue hat on a white shirt and he's able to go the distance. 65 yards on the Doug Martin touchdown run. He now has five carries for 116 yards and two TDs. So, so what? What, what is Roger Bailey? Is he prescient now? You know, at the top of the show mentioning Martin? Holy cow. Wasn't he talking about his ability on kickoff returns? I guess he's a pretty good running back, too. <laughs> Corey Wyardi, the center, shows the athleticism now of a number of centers that now can pull out, and the combination of that and poor run support in the secondary enables Martin to go the distance. Take a look at that. Just did a great job of cutting off the pursuing linebacker, and now it's a matter of a foot race, and Martin proves that he's got the speed to go to the house. Well, let's take a look at the uh, drive summary brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com or your local dealer. Didn't take a whole long, a lot of time to tabulate this one. Two plays, 79 yards, all Doug Martin on the ground. It took him 26 seconds to produce that touchdown. A 65-yard run. Again, five carries, 116 yards for him in the game already. And we are just at the midway point of quarter one. And Derek Good will take a knee in the Ram end zone, first and 10 for Colorado State. It's third drive of the game. The first two have gone three and out. One of the things that happens when you continue to start, this is the this is the second time they've been at the 20, and the third time they were at the 18-yard line. Amongst the, the the superlatives for the Boise State Broncos is the fact that they average starting position at the 40-yard line, their opponents the 22. Those two first downs are absolutely huge in the course of a game. And Colorado State is trying to become the first team in Boise State's last four games to cross the 50-yard line in the opening quarter. Thomas to the air is going to try and do it right here. He's got a man wide open. It is Luke Greenwood, and it's off his fingertips incomplete. Craylon Ewing Burton was covering on the play, but he got beat by Greenwood. Greenwood obviously has a lot more confidence because of the big game that he had last uh, two weeks ago. You can see if he lays out, maybe he comes up with that. But one of the difficulties that you have when you transition from being a running back to a wide receiver is you're savvy in catching the ball. You're not really sure of your body a lot of times. I know that people have seen diving catches before, but right now in his development, maybe Greenwood just isn't capable of that. Second and 10, Chris Woke spins out of a tackle, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. It's gonna be a loss of one, all that work to get close to uh, the 20 yard line. Shea McClellan among the Broncos in on the stop. And the penetration by Wynn is the one that really busted the play up. What's impressive to me about this Boise City defense, people talk a lot about swarming. You know, he's able to escape that and so many times you've seen a guy cut back against the green, get five or six yards, not so. There are a number of blue shirts that had crossed the line of scrimmage, hence the reason why it was a tackle for loss. Third and 11. Gilmore is the motion man. He's the tight end. They love to get him out in patterns, and the screen pass is complete. But as soon as the catch is made, the receiver touched his knee down. That was Marquise Law, so a gain of, well, no gain on the play. It's going to be fourth down and 11. Three straight, three and outs. Billy Wynn finally brought him down. 
Well, if Kondodiakis didn't feel as if he was getting enough work during the season, he certainly has here already punting for the third time. Just a little ways past the midway point of the first quarter. And he's a pretty good punter, averaging better than 40 yards per kick and no pressure at all. And again, that wind just drops it down into the hands of Mitch Burrows at the 45-yard line. And we go back to what you were talking about a moment ago is the starting drive for Boise State are really, really advantageous. Today's Powering Education is brought to you by Idaho Power. Visit Facebook.com slash Idaho Power and tell your education story. Your organization could be the recipient of a Powering Tomorrow grant. And we salute Nate Potter, a Boise State offensive lineman, senior business major, a 3.7-plus GPA. He's already in grad school studying behavioral kinesiology. Second team academic All-American that he's been around the program quite a while. It was a gray shirt back in 2006, graduated in May of 2011, an All-American candidate. Not just a great student, but a great player as well. Nice move by Shoemaker. And he gets it into Colorado State territory at the 47-yard line. Iraq, Poe, and Gray combined to make the tackle. Okay, be candid with me, and I will be with you. Did you ever get a 3-7? Um, Ten-yard dash? Maybe? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, the, the okay. classroom. Oh. I never did. <laughs> Second down and two. Here's Martin. And he falls forward across the 45 to the 43. Plenty for another Boise State first down. Today's first and 10 line is brought to you by Remax, the sign you want, the agent you need. Two touchdown lead for the Broncos inside Ram territory once again. They scored on a six yard, or bigger part, a seven yard drive and a two yard drive. And now first and 10 from the 43. We've not seen Kellen Moore stretch the field in the passing game yet. And that pass is lofted over the middle. It's complete near the uh, necessary yardage for a first down. We talked, a, we talked about how Kellen Moore has had to spread the ball around. One of the things that he does do so effectively, and this is a good example of it, he just throws a really catchable ball, which is difficult when you have a left-hander. He just turns and gives it to Martin, who slips through a couple of tackles and moves across the 25 to the 23. Another tackle by Shaq Barrett. Well, one of the things that Larry Kerr, the defensive co coordinator, pointed out is that from the waist down, he really thought Martin was powerful. That certainly has been the case here in the first quarter. Martin showing some patience on this sweep, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 20-yard line as Boise State goes hurry up again. Ezra Thompson forced him out of bounds. I, I mentioned that, Bill, because I, I, I don't know what it is exactly. But he's broken at least a half dozen tackles, and whatever his yardage after contact is, it's got to be quite high. Martin exits. D.J. Harper has come in, number seven. Moore steps up, runs, and slides. Finally got a little pass rush on him. That was Nordley Cappy, the uh, defensive end that we expect to talk about quite a bit today, but so far he's been neutralized in the pass rush. Uh, and one of the things that Cappy and his associates are going to have to are going to have to be cognizant of is they're going to have to be a little bit patient. Moore gets the ball out so quickly that as pass rusher, you do everything you can and you get so close and you're not able to get it, and sometimes you get frustrated. And in getting frustrated, you can't go 100%. Third down and four. The ball at the Colorado State 18-yard line. There was some shuffling along the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be a procedure penalty against Boise State. And that'll set it back uh, third down and nine. And I suppose if Chris Peterson can find something to be a little upset about in this quarter, that was it, the procedure penalty, because everything else has worked perfectly. Well, Boise State does an outstanding job of shuffling in a variety of players. And the movement that they have, whether it's motion or shifting, it makes the defense uncomfortable because you really can never get quite set with what it is you want to do defensively. They don't get penalized very much. Just two penalties last week against Fresno State. Average just five flags against the Blue on the year. Third down and nine pass complete to Burroughs. And he's knocked down at the 16-yard line. The yard to make was the 15, so here comes fourth down. And Boise, Boise State's, State's going to go, go for it. it, yeah. 
I was surprised when I saw the shuffle from the Colorado State defense going to the sidelines as if they were thinking field goal, but Boise State's going for the jugular. The Broncos this season on fourth down conversions are six of 11. This is Martin and he stopped in the backfield. Shaq Barrett snuck in there and brought him down. I don't know if the word I'd use was snuck, <laughs> but he certainly got on the other side, and Barrett does a great job of shooting the gap. Watch number 56. Shoot that gap right there between the guard and the tackle, dropping Martin behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by the Colorado defense, defense of rising to the occasion because a three-touchdown uh, margin in the first quarter might have been insurmountable. C.J. James also got some good penetration and it looked like he kind of opened the door for Barrett to go right through and make that tackle. So here's Thomas. First and 10 from the 17. The pressure gets to him and he's dropped sacked for the 14th time this year. Tyrone Crawford wrapped him up and brought him down. And that loss is back to the 11 yard line. Well, Crawford, just, Crawford just beats his man. With the outside rush, gets underneath the armpit, takes the correct angle. Thomas has dropped. Second down and 16. This is Raymond Carter, transferred here from UCLA, brought down at the 15-yard line. Short gain on the play, and it's third down to Long Crawford with another stop. And Here's the comparison between the two quarterbacks, one a, a fifth-year senior and the other a true sophomore in two years. Well, one of, one of the things you have to take into account, remember that, uh, that Keller Moore was surrounded by, in a lot of cases, guys that play at the next level, a number of which are playing on Sundays now, most notably those two wide receivers from last year. Pete Thomas is still developing, and maybe if he can have a supporting cast like that over the next two years, he'll have similar numbers. Now you're talking about Austin Pettis and Titus Young. Third down and 12. And that pass is incomplete. Intended for Thomas Kaufman, a redshirt freshman from Austin, Texas. And Colorado State's fourth possession ends on a three and out and a punt. Jamar Taylor was over there covered. And this is and this is what happens, Bill, when he gets sacked two plays before. You hurry the ball. You can see that Thomas, he wasn't under duress in this situation, but because he'd been sacked earlier, he hurt his ball, was a little bit low, and once again, Kondodiakos is into punt. Burrow standing at his own 48. Kondodiakos is standing on his goal line. He needs a big boot to turn the field, and the rush came up the middle, and that punt is blocked. It's still taking a Colorado State. Everybody is charging because I, th I think it hits somebody on the back of the leg. The entire CSU bench is uh, screaming at somebody from Colorado State to get on that football. It's downed at the 48-yard line. This might be something they might want to take a look at, a 38-yard punt after it was blocked by a Bronco. Of course, then again, that's an awfully long way to bounce off of a calf. Now there's no extended uh, protesting going on. And so it's going to be Boise State uh, football. Minute seven to play in the first quarter. It's 14-0 Broncos. They were turned away on a fourth down try in their previous drive. Moore steps up, pass over the middle. That is caught. That's going to be a Bronco touchdown. Shoemaker into the end zone for Boise State. 52 yards on the play, and there they get that third touchdown of the first quarter. Well, the problem here is the secondary for Colorado State. There are a number of people that are looking in the backfield. They've got the clock in their head, and then when Kellen Moore steps up in the pocket, they forget, the, they forget the people that they're guarding, and they look at the quarterback. And as a result, Shoemaker is able to get behind the white shirts, and it's an easy touchdown for the Broncos. Dan Goodale for the uh, point after try. And the freshman puts it through. And with 59 seconds now to go in the first quarter, it's 21-0 Boise State. Well, take a look at the white shirts you're going to see right here. Look at, look at the looks into the backfield. You know, you can't do that. You just can't afford that to look at the quarterback, especially when he steps up like that. And the result, as we pointed out, easy money. Look at that ball. Despite the fact that he moves a little bit forward, puts it right between the eight and the nine, and it's another six for the Broncos. 
With that uh, touchdown pass, as we tell you about the Jeep drive summary, again, visit jeep.com or your local dealer. They've had a two-play touchdown drive and now a one-play touchdown drive. 52 yards, took all of eight seconds, and with that touchdown pass, Kellen Moore has just tied former Hawaii standout Timmy Chang on the all-time uh, career touchdowns list with 117. He still has a couple of more games to go, and I'm guessing he's going to go quite a bit higher on that list. Boise State averaging over 40 points per game so far this season, one of the highest scoring teams in the country again this year, where they just do it so calmly and, and somewhat effortlessly. Well, as you pointed out, I, I thought it was interesting in our conversation with the Boise State coaches that while the offense gets all of the attention, uh, this defense has been outstanding. A lot of people don't realize how good that defense has been for Boise State because, as you point out, the offensive side of the ball accrues all the accolades. Harmon's kick goes to Derek Good at the four. It gets out of his arms. And now he's got some work to do. Drop down at the 14-yard line. And again, poor field position for Colorado State. Mountain West football continues on versus next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 1.30 Mountain as Air Force and Boise State collide. Then Saturday, November 5th at 3 o'clock Eastern and 1 Mountain. Don't miss Army and Air Force as they battle for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. College football on versus every game means something. You know, we've been talking about the Burma Road that Air Force has had to go through here in October, the difficult games, Navy, Notre Dame, San Diego State. And, of course, we just pointed out now next week, Boise State. Delayed handoff to Chris Woke. Having, Positive yards to the 19. I was about to say, though, having said that, of those games, the one, if they said you could only win the one game, they'd have picked Navy, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> and they did it in thrilling fashion. Uh, got ahead early, and that game ended up going in the overtime. Somewhat of a controversial finish with the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty going against uh, Army. Missing the uh, point after on a blocked kick by Air Force, and then the uh, Falcons went on to win it. 35-34. 19 seconds to play, and down goes Thomas. Tyrone Crawford has another sack. The senior out of Windsor, Ontario. Boise State only had nine sacks coming into this uh, game. Already a couple of sacks here in the first quarter, a quarter that has been dominated by the fifth-ranked team in the country. Pete Thomas, I guess the good news is, well, you're going to have the wind behind your back, but you got an uphill climb to get back in this game. So far, the trip has been worth it for those Boise State fans who are here in Fort Collins. The Broncos lead it 21 to nothing after the first 15 minutes of play. This unlimited update is brought to you by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. And so far, the Broncos have scored on a march. A long run, a 26-yard run by Doug Martin. They've scored on a sprint. Here's Martin with a long touchdown run of 65 yards. Hit over 115, 100 yards rushing, beg your pardon, in the first quarter alone. And then they scored on a strike. One play, 52 yards. Kellen Moore to Shoemaker for the touchdown. And it's 21-0 Boise State as we begin the second quarter of play. Thomas out of the shotgun, third down and 13. Over the middle, he lofts a pass way out there and too far out in front of Thomas Kaufman. That's the second time that he's had a receiver open down the middle of the field, and the second time he's overthrown him. Shea McClellan provided the heat on Thomas. All right, today's stats are brought to you by Dodge. Never neutral. Well, clearly you can indicate by the stats the total yards, 243-7. to seven. You look at that and you say, is it 21 to nothing after the first? Yeah, it is. That's exactly right. And of course, the rushing yards stand out 136 to 3. Boise State has been completely dominant. Condodiakos standing in his end zone now. His fifth punt already. And this is with the wind. And this is a beauty. Burrow's driven all the way back to his 30. And he's getting positive yards near the 40, dropped down at the 39 yard line. 59-yard punt for Pete Condodiakos. 
This copyrighted telecast of the Mountain West is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience and any retransmission, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use or dissemination of this telecast or the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Mountain West is prohibited. You got to do that quick because the Broncos like to play a little hurry up and they can strike quickly. Interesting that their average starting position has been the 36, while the opponent, in this case Colorado State, has been the 18, which is an 18-yard differential, exactly the same as it has been coming into this game. On first and 10, pass complete, short gain on the play. And that's to the tight end, Kyle Ifa, Mike Arakpo, sophomore linebacker out of Houston made the tackle. Pickup of two. And on the ground with DJ Harper. And a rack pull again. Wraps him up, brings him down. Short gain on the play, and it'll be third down. You're saying to yourself, why is Harper in the game instead of Martin? Well, Harper, it, it may not quite be Martin's equal, but I think the other thing, too, is that as a senior, he's somebody that deserves some playing time with a three touchdown lead. Why not? Boise State is one for two on third down tries. Pass complete, and yeah, that is a first down. Mitch Burrows steps out of bounds right at the 50-yard line, and the Broncos needed the 49. There's nice patience on the part of Kellen Moore to let the outside receiver clear the way, enabling the throw underneath to be a first down there at midfield. Today's first and 10 line is brought to you by REMAX, the sign you want, the agent you need. Aaron Burks was late into the game for the Broncos who wanted to play hurry up. And the pass is to him. And a pickup of nine on the play, a rack pull with another tackle. Just goes to show maybe you don't necessarily have to be set to get the ball. <laughs> Runs completely across the field, gets set, and he's the one that catches a pass for nine yards. And Kellen Moore is now a perfect 10 for 10 to start the game for 116 yards. And Harper takes the carry to the 35-yard line, and that's plenty for another Bronco first down. Arakpo and Max Morgan make the stop. Max Morgan is seeing a, a lot of playing time because of the uh, injury to linebacker Michael Sisson, who was hurt in the Northern Colorado game. And now Mike Arakpo is the uh, Ram who was slow in getting up. In fact, not getting up at all. Well, Arakpo, the leading tackler for Colorado State on the season, so hopefully that that's not a serious situation. Coming into this game, 30 unassisted tackles for number one. An outstanding all-around player for the Rams. Mike Arakpo was just now getting up for Colorado State, Todd. Well, one of the things, too, is that as he was getting up just before you came back, you could see that he had a little bit of blood in his mouth, and here's the reason why. Take a look at this. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, man. Talk about the old days when I come back. Forget face mask. The guy didn't have a helmet. Watch number one Arakpo stick his head in there and Harper's shoulder catch him right in the face. Oh, man. DJ Watch Harper it. goes 5'9 and a solid 200 pounds. First down play. First and 10 from the 36. And this is Harper getting to the outside and getting into the end zone. Touchdown, Boise State. 36-yard touchdown run. For Boise State, backup running back D.J. Harper. Well, once again, it's a case of the safety Austin Gray taking a bad angle. He comes up, and it looks like he's got him. He's going to tackle him for about a five or six yard gain. And instead, Harper does a little hesitation in the hole, and he's absolutely gone. Goodale on for the point after again so far. Three for three. And this one is tipped at the uh, line of scrimmage, but it's still good. 28 to nothing as we take another look at this touchdown. Another long touchdown run. They've scored three touchdowns on long runs. Here comes the hole. Watch the hesitation by Harper in the hole to fool the safety. Right there, he makes a break. Look at the breakdown right there. There's too much of a hesitation. Bad angle. The result is Harper is off to the races. Austin Gray, number 12, is the one that uh, Harper got around for the touchdown. 
Well, let's take a look at the drive summary brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com or your local dealer. Six plays, 61 yards, less than two minutes off the clock. Another, as I said, touchdown run from Boise State. They've scored on touchdown runs now of 65, 26, and 36. And, oh, by the way, Kellen Moore snuck in a touchdown pass at the end of the first, uh, first quarter. 28 to nothing. Harper, by the way, was Boise State's starting running back uh, a couple of years ago, and he was good enough that they had, had Doug Martin playing over on the defensive side, playing some special teams, but then Harper got hurt. They said, we got to bring this Martin kid back and uh, get some depth at the running back position. And Martin took the ball, ran with it, and ran with it so well that he never gave Harper his job back. Both of those guys are excellent, though, excellent running backs at the collegiate level. And Martin uh, is, is a back that Steve Fairchild, who has coached some in the NFL, has said he has the NFL-type build. He's the kind of running back in terms of his stature that you look for at the next level. So what in the world was he doing on defense? <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Across the 20 to the 22-yard line. Well, the road ahead is brought to you by Les Schwab Tire Centers, doing the right thing since 1952. Coming up for Boise State, they've got uh, Air Force coming to town on October 22nd, then a bye week, UNLV on the road, TCU on November 12th, San Diego State, and then Wyoming wraps it up on uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Now for Steve Fairchild and the Colorado State Rams, the next two are on the road at UTEP and UNLV, a game with San Diego State here after a bye week, and then on the road to take on TCU, and then the, uh, the showdown here against arch rival Wyoming. Carter up the middle on the carry to the 26-yard line. That's a pickup of four. Fairly interesting to note uh, in frustration here, down 28 to nothing. The 22-yard line is the best field position Colorado State has had all day. And that because the kickoff was into a fairly stiff right. breeze out of the north. Gain of four in the last play, second down and six. Carter across the 30 to the 33, and Colorado State has its first first down of the game. And that brings Ram fans to life. Boise State has 12 first downs in the game so far. Boise State, four touchdowns. Colorado State, one first down. You don't get points for the latter. Carter, tripped up, brought down. Is the football loose? The officials say it was, and Boise State has the football. Ebo McKende, I believe, came up with the loose ball. Well, as the saying goes, when it rains, it pours. Finally, you get something that goes your way. You get your initial first down of the game, and the very next carry, you cough the ball up. Carter heads into the line, and he's stripped there by number 37. That is McKinley who That's stripped McKinley it. who strips the ball. Crawford comes up with it. Now Boise State knocking him off for the fifth touchdown of the game. 11th fumble, fifth loss this season for Colorado State. Moore steps up. He's still perfect. That pass is complete to Burroughs. Gain of 11 on the play to the 22-yard line. That moves the change. Aaron Davis made the tackle. Here's the fumble on Super Slomo. A little bit of the, a little bit of the outside of McKenday, and that's something that, you know, as a running back heading into the line between the tackles, you have to be aware that that's coming. Shoemaker across the 15, the leaps to the 10. And that's another Boise State first down, a gain of 12 on the play. You know, as Shoemaker and Miller trade off for one another, they're both very good blockers downfield. Both big bodies, too, at about 215 pounds. In that case, it was Miller who led the way for Shoemaker to get that first down down to the level with an excellent block. Boise State in the red zone this season is 23 of 28 in scoring. 21 of those 23 scores have been touchdowns. First and 10 from 11, Martin. A lot of white jersey we're waiting for him at the eight yard line, and that's where he's tackled. 
yet another thing that impresses me about this Boise State team, Bill, is that I, I, I don't know 40 times uh, of the players, all of the players, but they play football fast. And there's a big difference between football fast and putting on your shorts and having somebody time you with a stopwatch. We talked to Chris Peterson uh, earlier this week. He said the thing that we want to do with our guys and put them in situations every day in practice so that when they get to the game, they're not surprised by anything, and that allows them to play with a much quicker pace. And that is Moore connecting for the touchdown to his brother Kirby Moore, the sophomore. You know, on both touchdown passes that Moore has had, he does something that you really can't coach in a lot of cases. I realize that you see him right there, kind of a nondescript body at six feet tall, maybe 6'1", tops and 190 pounds. He's not a Michael Vick type, but he shuffles his feet, moves around just enough in the pocket to buy that extra time that puts pressure on the secondary. PAT is good. We have 10 minutes to play before halftime. It's 35-0, Boise State. Hey, take a look at Moore in the pocket right here. As he steps up, bides a little bit of time, steps to his right, puts the pressure on the secondary, the fifth touchdown of the game for the Broncos. Double coverage is brought to you by GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. And Kirby Moore is able to beat two Colorado State defenders in the end zone, and big brother Kellen steps up and he says, hey, thanks, bro. Thanks for delivering it on the money for a touchdown. Take a look at the Jeep Drive Summary brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com or your local dealer. Four plays, 33 yards, a minute and a half. Kirby Moore, just like they used to do in the backyard in Prosser, Washington, a nine-yard touchdown catch from his brother, Kellen. Now, notice notice he can have the uncut un, the uncut hair. That's cool. But as a quarterback, you know, you, you know, Kellen, Kellen has to do, take a look at that. Take a look at that cloth. It's just right. Because <laughs> you know, he has to do all the interviews. You know, oh. he's going to have to, you know, he's going to be garnering all the trophies, and especially if he keeps up, especially if he keeps up those kind of numbers. You know, a guy say, a lot of people say Kellen Moore was just the, the perfect guy. Great guy, a good student, quarterback. I guess those numbers would bear that out. 14 of 14, just 20 minutes into this game. And uh, after the kick, the uh, Rams will have it first down at the 27-yard line. How about we check in with Roger Bailey? Guys, it should be no surprise that Boise State puts up 35 here in the first two quarters. They have been dominant in 2011 with those few touchdowns they have today. That goes to 153 for the Broncos and only 16 for their opponents in the first halves of 2011. Let's not look at the offense of just the bride. you got to give some credit that the brides made that defense. They have only allowed one touchdown and three field goals in 2011 for a team that scores 42 points a game over the last 10 years that's pretty dominant on both sides of the ball excellent point and they say that there's a, a great relationship between the offense and the defense on first down going deep as Thomas Kaufman lays out and makes a dynamite catch Jamar Taylor was covering on the play but the perfect catch the perfect timing by Kaufman turns in the highlight of the day for the Rams this is almost the identical throw that they had earlier to Greenwood, but Greenwood was unable to sacrifice his body and lay out and come up with it. Kaufman, take a look at the extension here. Five foot 10, 168 pounds. What a spectacular catch by the Austin Texan native. 46 yards on that play, and for the first time, the Rams are in Bronco territory. Gilmore goes in motion. The ball at the 27. This is Gilmore. He wants to throw. He does. He's got Brown. Touchdown! Well, when you got a couple of weeks off, after a loss to San Jose State, maybe add a couple of more pages into that playbook, and everybody knows Boise State for its ability to come up with a trick play or two. Steve Fairchild elected to use one right there, and it comes at a very, very good time for Colorado State to have something good happen. DeLine's point after try is blocked and smothered by Yam. He can't come up with it. That ball is still loose, and Gilmore, who threw the touchdown pass, sprints down to cover it up at the 35, so the Broncos couldn't go the other way for a couple of more points. But we'll give you a chance to take a couple of looks at it, but the one in particular, is this forward? Huh? Just enough backwards. But it enables Gilmore to throw it downfield for the first touchdown of the day for Colorado State. 
Maybe to the naked eye, as I was a little bit concerned as to whether or not this might be a forward pass. But take a look at Thomas's feet just outside. And then about a yard behind. It looks, it looks close because Gilmore steps up. But there was no beef on the other side of the ball. And so they're able to do that. And you can see Brown breaking three right here as he's able to knife between the two blue shirts. And that makes for an easy throw for Gilmore, who puts it on the money, and a touchdown for the Rams. Take a look at our drive summary brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com or your local dealer. Two plays, 73 yards, 35 seconds. The big play, the uh, layout and a catch by Thomas Kaufman for 46 yards that set up that touchdown pass from Gilmore to Joe Brown. And for Brown, that's his first career touchdown catch. Dallas Burroughs was back for Boise State to receive. And with that win behind Ben line, he sends it through the end zone. You know, one of the conversations that I'd had, you see right here, the numbers that he has put up over the last 19 games. That's a pretty staggering number, at least two touchdown passes over the last 19. Remember the Music City Miracle? I was thinking the same thing. Yep. Except for the difference there is the guy standing on the 19 and a half and the guy catches it on the 21. I'm a little confused. I said, <laughs> you know, I, I'm doing my math here. I'm pretty sure that that's forward, isn't it? But I didn't want the facts to get in the way of a good story, obviously. Doug Martin across the 30 to the 35. Boy, he is very, very elusive. A gain of 15 on the play. James Skelton and Shaq Bell combined to make the tackle. And once again, despite the fact that they have a 29-point lead, they continue to go with a hurry up, and why not? It's been so effective for them. More complete again to Kyle Efa, his tight end, and that's a gain of five. James Skelton, the linebacker, with the tackle. Here's one of the other reasons why Kellen Moore doesn't get sacked very often. If you're a pass rusher, you're a bigger guy that you're running constantly and they go with the hurry up, what kind of start and stop do you get? And you're fatigued. So it's easily, it's easily understood why he's only been sacked once thus far in the season. This time Colorado State plays the run very well. C.J. James, the lead tackler on that play. Gain of about a yard from Martin. That'll bring up third down and three. Boise State is two of three on third down conversions. 16 first downs in the game. That pass is complete. Geraldo Boldevine, who became eligible just a couple of weeks ago, makes the tackle. Shaq, or makes the catch. Shaq Bell with the tackle. Boldevine gives them a completely different dimension in their passing game than they had in the first uh, four games of the season. He's 6'4", goes 204, and has excellent speed. He really stretches that uh, passing game much more vertically than they had had in the uh, first third of the season. Martin leaps into the arms of Curtis Wilson and Austin Gray who make the tackle a game of three. You know, that sort of leaping is indicative of the confidence that you have because usually what happens is that when you leap, if a guy can take your feet out, that you can land in your head and really have some problems. But Martin, after all the success that he's had here early on, is unafraid. 12 carries, 155 yards from Martin, and a couple of more here. Shaq Bell, another tackle, number three. You know, one thing that a lot of people don't realize with regards to Kellen Moore is this guy's a pretty good athlete. Take a look at that snap. That's a very nice catch that enables Martin to have a clean handoff. Third down and two. Moore to the air. That's complete. Big play. Kyle Efa brought down from behind at the 15-yard line. Davis Burrell. Had to sprint downfield and bring Efa down. One of the impressive things about Kellen Moore on that particular play is the guy who was over Efa, who he thought was in coverage, comes on the blitz. Moore sees it right away and delivers the ball to number 80 right down the field. Great savvy on the part of number 11. And Moore splits out in this pattern. He split to the near side at the bottom of your screen. That's Burroughs in motion. Burroughs takes the handoff from Doug Martin. Runs a long way to pick up about three yards. The ball comes loose right in front of the sideline. And Colorado State comes up with it. Momo Thomas forced the fumble. And he recovered it. It's a great job by Thomas of doing both. Burroughs is stood up. If he goes down right away, maybe he doesn't fumble. But being stood up, that enabled Thomas the opportunity to strip the ball and recover it.
I try to the end of the play. A little bit of a hold up right there. And there's Thomas. You know, he's fighting and concentrating on one person. The ball comes loose long before the knees are down. You can tell because Burrow scraps for the ball. So Thomas gives Colorado State the football back. Both teams have turned it over in this game. Thomas retreats, middle screen. That pass is complete. This is Woke. Shuffles across the 15 to the 18-yard line. Once again, the pursuit by the Boise State defenders. You saw a number of, you saw it set up very well. A lot of guys are rushing Thomas. He, bought, he, you know, he coaxes them in, throws the ball. They get one block at the point of attack. Looks like that could be a 10 or 15 yard play. It turns out to only be five because of the pursuit of the Broncos. So second down and five. The ball at the Ram 18 yard line. Thomas, good protection, pass complete. This is Gilmore, penalty flag on the play, and Gilmore still going. Pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. The flag is laying at the 14. Tommy Smith and Ebo McKinde combined to finally get rid of or get uh, Gilmore out of bounds. Well, the fact that the referee runs downfield would indicate that it's not holding, and it isn't. It's roughing the passer, and so they'll tack on another 15 for the Rams. Alan Eck is the referee. 27-yard gain on the play. That's a great stiff arm again. Difficult at 6'6", six six, 240 pounds just to bring down Gilmore in the open field. So Colorado State gets the football into uh, Boise State territory. The ball is at the 42-yard line. Just over five and a half to play before intermission. 35 to six is our score. Woke is the tailback. And the pass is complete to Gilmore again. That time is brought down. That stiff arm didn't work on Tommy Smith, who tripped him up after a gain of five. Well, one of the things that Steve Fairchild said with regards to Gilmore is that they were going to try and get him the ball more between the hashes, and that's what they've done today. Last week you saw he had five catches. He's, he's the kind of tight end that can dictate a defense. And when you have a tight end that can change things in the secondary, you have a very valuable asset. Second and five from the 37. That's Gilmore in motion, number 10. Chris Wilke. Bouncing to the left side. Turned away right at the 35-yard line. That'll bring up third down. Now, granted, Colorado State, Todd, has gotten a couple of big plays. The long pass play to Kaufman and then the trick play. And then the play to, uh, to Gilmore here. But they have certainly have been a little bit more effective in moving the ball with the wind behind and going north to south as opposed to all the three and outs in the first quarter. No doubt about that. And, and given the circumstances here, if they throw the ball and it's incomplete, I'm thinking that they're likely to go for it here in fourth down. So far, Colorado State is 0 for 5 in third down conversions. The line to make is the 32. Thomas lops it up. This is for Luke Greenwood. A lot of hand fighting going on as he and George Iloka were running down the sidelines. The penalty flag does come out, and Iloka cannot believe it as he goes down to the turf. Well, this is a bit of a mismatch, and this is a good job by Thomas for finding this. Iloka. Iloka is a safety by trade, and at six foot three, 215 pounds, he's a little bit big to be covering a Lou Greenwood, who's probably in the 4 3 range in terms of 40. Take a look at the right hand. He finds him right there. And uh, Greenwood does a nice job of selling it. <laughs> George thought his uh, coverage uh, was, was pretty good, and then he saw that flag flying out of the corner of his eye. So first and 10 from the 20. The drive continues now into Boise State territory with 4.08 to play. And a quick handoff. Roque lops it into the end zone. That's caught for a touchdown. Matt Yim. Beg your pardon, that's Charles Lovett, number five, not six, who took the handoff and lofted the pass into the end zone for another Colorado State TD. Tricking and treating here at Fort Collins. Well, Lovett was a high school quarterback, as so many are. Uh, as so many skilled people are at the collegiate level, I'm surprised here that Colorado State isn't going for two. The line's last point after try was blocked. This one is good, and Colorado State 
has scored on its last two possessions, 35-13 as we near halftime. Second career touchdown pass for Charles Lovett. Well, does this fall under the heading of, you know, one time, one time you fool it? Shame on you. Second time, shame on me. I mean, this is two halfback passes now that have fooled the Boise State secondary, which is very surprising. Lovett puts that ball right on the money. Just a terrific throw. I half half is a very good athlete. I half expect to see uh, Chris Peterson on the sidelines, perhaps tipping that cap touche to Steve Fairchild <laughs> for a couple of touchdowns on trick plays. Here's the Jeep Drive summary. Again, visit Jeep.com or your local dealer. Five plays, 87 yards on that drive with the win. Two and a half minutes off the clock with the 20-yard touchdown pass to Matt Yam. And particularly exciting for Yam because he's a local kid from Fort Collins High School here. Uh, and it, it's nice for him to have his moment in the sun here in this White House. Uh, this whiteout, as it were, despite the fact uh, that they're still considerably behind. Yeah, we should explain the, the whiteout and the reason why Colorado State is wearing the all-white uniforms today. Uh, Colorado State teamed up with the Poudre Valley Health Systems to uh, uh, whiteout cancer is the uh, concept of today's promotion. So all the fans who came to the, uh, the field today were encouraged to wear white. The team is in all white for the first time since 1980 that they have worn the white uniforms here at home. Boise State being on the road was allowed since the uh, grass is green or the fake grass is green. <laughs> right, they right, can wear right. all blue if they want. <laughs> Still somewhat of a sore subject in Boise, I might add. The uh, kickoff is taken at the 10-yard line. And hit down hard was Dallas Burroughs. And you know what? It's Derek Good's turn, right? He's the guy that usually takes those shots on the return. Instead, he decides that he's the guy that's going to get a piece out of the receiver. Well, let's go back in time. You don't see the white uniforms here at home very often, but the last time at Hughes Stadium was in 1980 when Colorado State welcomed the Air Force Academy into a new conference. Uh, they did wear the gold pants back then. I, I kind of like that throwback helmet, and in this era of teams wearing so many different combinations of uniforms, and certainly Boise State has done that with those uh, the white, all white that we saw earlier this year at Georgia. Might go back to the throwback and wear those uh, gold helmets with the uh, green horns. And down for the first time goes Kellen Moore. C.J. James gets the sack. It's just the second time this season that Moore has been sacked. Loss of six, second down and 16. And that pass complete for a very short gain to Matt Miller. And now third down and long coming up. That's James Skelton who made the tackle. Well, really up to this point, the only thing that has stopped the Broncos has been the Broncos. Remember, they had that fourth down they didn't convert. And, of course, the fumble. Now they're in danger of turning the ball over. Because of the hurry up, there's three minutes remaining here in the half. Cappy applied some pressure. And that's the first incomplete pass thrown by Kellen Moore. Nuku Latu, who's been bothered by a sore knee, was among a number of Rams who was applying pressure. Cappy was coming around from the left side, and Kellen Moore's first incomplete pass is going to result in the Broncos having to kick it away. And, and certainly that's a benefit for the Rams in that situation because of the incomplete pass. That stops the clock with just a tick under three minutes. Plenty of time for Colorado State to matriculate their way up the field. Momo Thomas will receive for Colorado State. He's at his 30. Brad Elkin is the punter for Boise State. Todd, is this game getting a little more interesting? 35-13, but the momentum right now belongs to CSU, and that's Thomas making the catch at the 18-yard line, and quickly he's forced out of bounds. 2.51 left to play before intermission. Colorado State has put a couple of touchdowns on the board here in the second quarter. Now coming up on Ram Trucks Halftime Live, join Marius Payton, Ted Sundquist, and Reggie Rivers. They're going to break down the first half and get you caught up on all of the scores and highlights from around the Mountain West Conference. You know, we talked... We talked, about the mo we talked about the momentum, but really, that's one thing that stanches it just a little bit. Elkin, known as an inside the 20 kind of punter, but he gets a 55-yard kick and no return. Now Colorado State not in very good field position at their own 18. Punting into the wind, too. Yeah. Which is a real factor in the first quarter. So Thomas turns on the ground. Woke is tripped up right after he got the football. 
Loss of two on the play. And you can sense in the stands a little bit of a confusion. Kind of like, uh, say what? <laughs> <laughs> on their own 18-yard line, you talked about the momentum going their direction with two and a half minutes remaining here and down 22 points. You would have thought that they would have be moving with a little more alacrity in an attempt to garner another score before halftime. Colorado State much more productive offensively, just 20 shy of what Boise State has been able to do. And this is Charles Lovett, who threw the touchdown pass. Ran from one sideline to the other and may have picked up a yard. Now here's a situation where if you are Boise State, as a result of that punt, clearly Colorado State has decided that they don't want to take any chances. I'm surprised that Boise State isn't using a timeout right here. And look for a moment that perhaps Lovett was maybe going to throw the football. He kind of paused there for a moment. Maybe he was allowing his blockers to try and catch up to him. But here we go, third down and 11 inside two to play. The ball is at the 17-yard line. Thomas works the screen, and Gilmore had it go through his hands, and that was nearly intercepted by Aaron Tevis, the linebacker. Now if you're Steve with Momo Thomas standing at his 11-yard line. And it's a fake punt, and the snap is to the up back, and this is a first down and a whole lot more. Shoemaker, surrounded by white jerseys, fumbled the football that goes out of bounds. It's Boise State ball. Well, Steve Fairchild ran a couple of trick plays that resulted in touchdowns for Colorado State in the first half here in the second. Chris Peterson goes to his uh, playbook a little deeper, and this was easy. It really was. Well designed on the part uh, of Boise State. You can see the pulling guard. The ball gets stripped, but it goes out of bounds anyway. And maybe there was a situation where he said, hey, you know what? You guys aren't the only ones that could go with trick plays. <laughs> Great hustle on the part of McKay, a reserve fullback, to strip Shoemaker of the ball. But it still remains Broncos football. 37-yard pickup for Shoemaker. And this is Martin. Hit at the 20, and he falls forward two more yards. Max Morgan, a freshman linebacker from Greeley, which is just south of here. Well, again, this is part of the this is part of the frustration of tackling a guy like Martin, as you pointed out. It looked like he was down for about a one-yard gain. Instead, it ends up being about three or four. So second down and seven. What a tough start to the second half for Colorado State. You force a punt, and you're not looking for the trick play at midfield. Second down and seven. Martin runs through tacklers across the 15 to the 14-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Ivory Hurd, senior defensive back, made the stop. Well, and you can see a little bit. This is where the defense has to pick up. There's the number, look at the number of tackles that he's able to break through, and they just get him by the shoe tops there at the end. One of the things that Colorado State has to do here defensively, if possible, is force a field goal because you can see now that they're back on their heels and their body languages, they're a little bit depressed over doing so well, and the fake punt takes it all away. Straight at the middle, Martin makes a nice move to get around Shaq Bell and get into the end zone, and that's another Boise State touchdown. So they capitalize on the fake punt, big 37-yard gain, and with Colorado State reeling, they get it into the end zone for another Bronco touchdown. Well, it's impressive. what's impressive, we, we talk about him at the point of attack, take a look at him when he gets to that second level. Every single time now he has made the safety miss, in this case with Shaq Bell, who is in the secondary, Nary got a hand on, and as a result, the third tally of the day for number 22, Martin. Who, with that touchdown run, reaches the 200-yard mark on the day. 20 carries, 200 yards, three touchdowns. Pretty good day for Boise State's number 22. 42-13 our score early in the third. Boise State playing its first Mountain West Conference game as a member of the M-Dub. Jeep Drive Summary brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com. Nine plays, 80 yards off the opening kickoff of the second half. Three minutes, 34 seconds. Culminates with Doug Martin's third touchdown of the day, 14 yards on that run. He also has a 65-yarder and a 26-yard touchdown run. Martin, 20 carries, 200 yards. By my math, 10 yards per carry. 
Safe to say, however, that in that drive, the biggest play was the fake punt by Shoemaker. 37 yards on fourth down. Derek Good returning the kick to the 18-yard line. And what we've seen it so many times today that Todd, uh, that uh, Colorado State has had a tough time just getting back to the 20. Speaking of trick plays, well, Colorado State in the first half ran a couple that were very productive getting into the end zone. Yeah, you know what? And it's interesting, too, really uh, different variations, but essentially the non-quarterback throwing the ball for touchdowns. And, of course, that lightened up the crowd a little bit, got them a little bit excited. But then Boise State said, you know what? We can do that, too. We can fool you a little bit. And as you pointed out, that 37-yarder by Shoemaker, a huge play. Chris Woke opens up as the tailback in the second half for Colorado State. He's a sophomore from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, and Tyrone Crawford out of Windsor, Ontario. He's a senior. He made the stop. I wanted to, you made a very astute point with regards to the starting position. It's so frustrating. I can, I can tell from experience when you look out there and you've got to get three first downs just to get to midfield, not in scoring position, but just to get to midfield, it becomes taxing on the offense. Second down. A little gain on the play for Woke. And, and I say that because it, it's a very underutilized part of the game. People just think it's all about offense and defense, but it isn't. You know, if you can get two or three first downs getting field goal rings, that's enormous. In this case, you get two or three and you're still 20 yards outside. It's tough. So back-to-back -back carries by Woke, third down and five, and Colorado State does not want to be in this situation because the Rams are 0 for 6 on third down conversions. And we were talking about uh, in the open uh, to the broadcast the success or lack of success opponents have on third down against Boise State. Just 24% uh, success rate on third down as that pass is lofted out, intended for Lou Greenwood. It's incomplete, and Colorado State will punt. George Iloka was back covering on the play. Now with 0 for 6, now 0 for 7, that opponent third down conversion percentage is below 20% on the season. And most of those, which I found interesting, are the third down and six or more variety. One thing that I found interesting statistically, Boise State has 15 guys with double-digit tackles, 17 with tackles for loss. They spread it around. There are a lot of very good players on their defense. Burroughs. Showing a lot of patience, but not getting a whole lot of help. Running to the sidelines and picking up a couple of yards after running about 50. But another good starting field position for Boise State. Spotted out at the 34-yard line. The sun is setting on a beautiful day in Fort Collins. Absolutely perfect, although things don't look too good on the scoreboard for the home team. T-shirt sales uh, not so brisk right now, perhaps. Uh, People bought them a little earlier, 42-13. Near sellout crowd today here at uh, Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins. The out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by REMAX, the sign you want, the agent you need. Thursday night, Air Force lost at home to San Diego State, 41-27. Great night by Ronnie Hillman. Earlier today, Wyoming got a huge win in Laramie, defeating UNLV 41-14. And Nevada and New Mexico are doing battle today in Reno. That's an out-of-conference game this year. It'll be a conference contest a year from now. On the ground with the first play. First and 10 from the 34. That's where this drive is beginning for Boise State, who has had very good field position throughout this game. Aaron Davis made the stop. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned Ronnie Hillman. Uh, all, there's the comparisons all the time to Marshall Falk. But what catches my attention, he's 5'11", 190. Now, that's not a 20 carry a guy, but for some reason he's able to pull it off. Nobody ever gets a, a good shot at it. And, and for whatever reason, boy, I tell you what, he's really piling up the numbers. He's got some sweet feet. Had a tough second half against TCU because he didn't play after fumbling a couple of times, including on the one yard line in the game against the Horned Frogs. And there's more wide open. Here's the receiver along the far sideline. Beautiful move to the inside. And that's another Boise State touchdown for Tyler Shoemaker. Wide, wide open. Two quick touchdowns on their two drives in the second half. And this second half is beginning much the way the first half did for Boise State. Well, Kellen, Kellen Moore goes with the pump fake in Colorado State. Two different players bite on it. And Shoemaker has two of the easiest touchdowns of his career today against the Rams. He had three touchdowns against Toledo and plenty of time to get another one here. Point after try is good. 63 yards. 
on that touchdown pass from Kellen Moore to Tyler Shoemaker. And it's 49 to 13. Well, again, the pass protection is outstanding. Take a look. Take a look at here. Shoot, here he is in the slot. Now watch the pump fake and watch the two defenders here who are looking in the backfield. Both step up, and that enables him to be wide open down the field. And, of course, he's got the entire field to work with. In fairness to the safety, that's an awful long ways to go. Take just a little bit of hesitation. Both guys bite on it. Shoemaker is wide open. Again, that's a complete breakdown on the part of the secondary for the Rams, who have just been struggling all day long. Take a look at the Jeep drive summary. And again, these guys are not making the bookkeepers do a whole lot of work. Two plays, 66 yards, 53 seconds this drive, and Shoemaker 62 yards officially on the touchdown catch. Those are the kind of plays, Todd, where you've seen it many, many times when a guy is so wide open that people hold their breath that he's going to be able to concentrate enough to make that catch. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it might uh, fall incomplete. But again, there's that, there's that catchable ball. And, and I think it's interesting to, to Moore's credit. He sees the guy. Take, take a look here that he's going to see he's so wide open. He doesn't try and lead him perfectly. Perfectly. Double coverage is brought to you by Geico, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Now, now watch when you get both guys to bite and come forward. Now take a look. Now watch. He doesn't lead him perfectly. It's a little bit so look how he slows down just enough. And this is a great throw by Moore. And of course, as we point out, he has the rest of the field to negotiate with. And he's able to go the distance. Geico had double coverage. Colorado State had no coverage. <laughs> Shoemaker now has nine catches for 180 yards. And Kellen Moore, 25 of 29. He completed his first 18 attempts in this game. 335 yards, three touchdowns. And I think he's enjoying his day-to-day -day in Fort Collins. Well, I'm also thinking, too, that this might be his, his day might be done. One thing that Chris Peterson isn't about is running up the score. And padded stats for trophy resumes. This is good. Getting it out to the 24-yard line on the kickoff return. Today's first and 10 line is brought to you by Remax, the sign you want, the agent you need. Perhaps it was true that Chris Peterson was a little frustrated with his team going into the locker room at halftime after giving up 13 points in the the second quarter because uh, the Broncos have come out with a renewed focus, uh, you might say. Well, I, I think the, the pivotal play, as you pointed out, obviously, is that fake punt. I, I think that just changed whatever momentum Colorado State had working for them. Thomas to throw, and that pass is picked off. Shea McClellan got his paws on it and gets the ball back for Boise State. Well, they teach you if you're a defensive end that if, that if you're not able to penetrate and you can't get there, go ahead and stay back. Watch on the bottom. Now, look, he sees the back come out. He hustles back. That's great anticipation on the part of number 92. He starts to rush. Then he sees a back go past him, and he realizes, hey, you know what? Maybe they're going to throw this to the guy in the flat. Thomas doesn't see him at all. Turnover for the Broncos. McClellan had an interception return for a touchdown last year against Toledo. He'd probably like to drop a couple of those pounds. He's at 255 now playing along the defensive line. He was a high school running back in Caldwell, Idaho, and as a senior, he rushed for more than 1,800 yards. Probably not going to get that kind of yardage uh, carrying that uh, much weight. Well, Boise State brought in a new quarterback, Grant Hedrick, number nine, but Kellen Moore has going back out there. Yeah, he told him, he said, you know what, I, I'm too bad. You can't risk me on an option route, dude. You, you come in here and take this, then I'll come back. In. <laughs> Gain of nine. At the bottom of your screen, you're going to see Boldevine, and I wonder if they might want to give him a little confidence to see if he gets an opportunity. D.J. Harper instead bounces to the outside, lost his balance, had a good idea, but just could not keep his feet. Still thinks he's on his feet as he goes into the end zone, but I don't think they're going to buy that. Boldevine did come back last week against Fresno State, mentioning the long, uh, uh, lanky receiver with the great speed. It had two touchdown catches, catches mostly on the on a slant pattern. He has excellent speed, as I mentioned. So he did kind of get indoctrinated. But yeah, you think that they might want to get him 
more and more involved as the season goes on. How many assistant coaches do you guess put their hands up when they said we need to recruit the Netherlands? <laughs> <laughs> Harper again up the middle. Okay, you have your choice. You, you, know, <laughs> you can recruit Wyoming and Montana and the Dakotas, or you can go to the Netherlands. All right, I'll, I'll take a shot at it. Harper stopped by Max Morgan. This drive has a, a sense of inevitability. Second down and three. It's 49-13, but you know, you go back to the to the fake punt. The game was very much in the control of the Broncos, but Colorado State's defense had come out thinking it had forced a three and out of the punt, but the fake punt just completely took away the momentum. And there's another touchdown catch for pass and catch to this one to Gabe Lenahan from Kellen Moore. A three-yard pass this time around. And with seven minutes to go in the third quarter, the Broncos have topped the 50-point uh, uh, mark. Goodell out for the uh, point after try. And that's good. 56 to 13. And the uh, freshman kickers play, getting plenty of good work in the kicking game. And it's just an easy pass and catch for Moore to Linehan. Well, Linehan sees that it's not necessarily a man situation. And so as a result, he sits down. And Moore does a great job of seeing the same coverage that he does and delivers the ball on the money. Jeep drive summary, four plays, 17 yards, 124, just a three-yard touchdown pass from, now what, what on earth could they be saying to him on the phone? <laughs> what did you see on that play? <laughs> no, the, co the coach wants it to be known to the television viewing audience that you know what, yeah, I, I, was, the one that, I was the one that told him to do that. <laughs> Today's high-impact play is brought to you by Toyota. Visit Peterson Toyota in Fort Collins for great deals on a new Toyota. Peterson Toyota is your high impact Northern Colorado Toyota dealer. Doug Martin in a first quarter topped the century mark in rushing. He has over 200 yards in this game. And even though Kellen Moore gets all the attention for what he can do through the air, Doug Martin is proving and has proved throughout the day that he is one of the best running backs in the Mountain West Conference. Well, a quarterback, you can talk about receivers, you talk about a defense that gets you the ball, but you could argue, too, that the best friend of a quarterback is a guy behind him that can get that yard, get those yards, because what ends up happening is if you can't play action or you can't run the football, then that pass rush comes after you. Derek Good, another kickoff return. And he's brought down at the 16-yard line. And we've got an injured Ram on the field. We'll check that out in a moment. But let's go downstairs to Roger Bailey. You know, oftentimes coaches are always preparing for the future. And we talked to Coach Peterson when games get out of control like this. Are you able to make the adjustment? He goes, guys, I'm always preparing for next year. So he's already looking at 2012. He's got so many seniors on both sides of the ball that he is always in preparation. So even though it's 56 to 13, expect a new set of offensive players to come in, maybe some new defensive players players, but still running that same offense because, again, even though it's 2011, he needs to get a good look at what he's going to have coming back to prepare for 2012. And, and, Roger, I so respect that out of Chris Peterson, and we talked about it a moment ago. He doesn't pad scores. He doesn't pad resumes. And this is Aaron Davis, a very busy linebacker. Uh, we have saw a lot of him in the first half. He is the one who's injured right now. And he was mentioning that there are a lot of veterans on this Boise State roster, another tremendous senior class. And Chris Peterson is doing what he can do to get players ready for the future. But right now, this is what he's working with. And that's you're going to win a lot of games when you have 16 seniors who play a lot. Well, and that's right. And the one thing that people don't understand, I think, in some cases, you, you, you can scrimmage all you want and you can practice all you want. It just isn't the same as game speed. And so you don't want a situation where coming into 2012, you have people that have never played. And so what happens is that they, they don't really get into rhythm till the third, fourth, or fifth game. You want people that have played at game speed. And so when you do have blowouts like that, I agree with you. I respect what he's doing. But it is a, a product of functionality for him because he needs these guys to have played in game situations to benefit him in 2012. And it's a benefit to him that he has been winning. 
and oftentimes you see Boise State winning big. The young players are getting into games in the third quarter, getting into the fourth quarter. It's something that Steve Fairchild right now has not been able to do. He, he's he been very happy with the last three recruiting classes that he's been able to bring into Colorado State. And when you take a look at CSU's roster, and that graphic showed, nine sophomores are playing significant uh, snaps for CSU. As Thomas goes down, the ball is loose. They're going to rule it an incomplete pass. But when you look at CSU's recruiting over the last three years, now you're seeing much more of a national reach. You're seeing double digits in players on the roster from Texas, from California, from Florida, as well as players along the front range. Once again, the, the, the protection breaks down. The number six for Boise State, that's Simmons, who comes in and clobbers his arm. And and no challenge. The, yeah, as you say, they call it incomplete. If this is a 26-13 game, we right. might be looking at yeah. the video replay. Absolutely. So Thomas to throw again. The screen pass is set up for Woke. And he may have picked up a yard. That'll bring up third down and long once again. But getting back to, to what we were talking about with getting players' experience, the uh, you go back to TCU, for example, and nobody wants to criticize Gary Patterson with the way he handles his players because he's had good success. But Andy Dalton, even in games in which there were significant TCU leads, played every snap of the game, much like an NFL quarterback does. Casey Paha came in this year untested, uh, nine throws, maybe played a quarter and a half in a couple of years. I think it's interesting that this version of Boise State is following the template of both Utah and TCU. The years 2008 and of course last year in 2010 when they had BCS victories and climbed to number two in the polls which is four year starters at quarterback and a senior laden roster. Pete Thomas sacked by Jarrell Root and that'll bring Kunta Diakas in to punt it away again. Colorado State had some success in the first half. It was in the second quarter, moving from left to right, and this punt just does get away. It's a beautiful kick by Conta Diakas. Burles retreats back to his 25, makes the first man miss, makes a few more miss, and now he's got the corner. He's got some green real estate in front of him, and a wall of blockers helping him out. And he's pushed out of bounds, or pushed down by Shaq Bell at the 10 yard line. George Iloka makes a terrific block and he's able to get away with it. If you Sometimes you can do this. You keep your hands up and you look like you're not really blocking the guy in the back. Iloka is able to do that about the 30 yard line and that enabled Burroughs to get to the wall. Watch number eight. He's going to be just to the left of your screen. He just nudges the linebacker just enough in the back but doesn't push him and put his hands out. <laughs> and as a result, Burroughs is able to get to the outside. Look at that. Kind of a Dyron Robles imitation there with the hurdle. That was good. <laughs> I take it he's a track guy. First and ten from the ten. It'll be first and goal officially. And Joe Saplick is the quarterback. D.J. Harper is sprinting for the end zone. Lowered his head and he's pushed out. It looks like at the three-yard line. Nope, they're going to move it ahead a couple of more yards. He's out at the one. So there's Joe Southwick, a sophomore from Danville, California. Six foot one, 190 pounds. Getting a lot of reps because Kellen Moore and his Bronco offense has done such a good job of rolling up 40 plus points a game and rolling to a 5 0 record to this point in the season. So he and Grant Hedrick have seen some decent amount of snaps in the backup role. Gold medalist in the Beijing Olympics. I heard it was 1287 <laughs> world record holder. My homies in Eugene know that. Come I, on, Bill. I thought I know. I know. <laughs> Not more than the jumps, but you know, nevertheless. Uh, so timeout is taken by the Broncos. There was eight seconds remaining on the play clock, but Southwick apparently didn't like what uh, he saw there, so he's going to go talk to Coach Moore and see what he needs to do the next time around. And, folks, that is a live shot. That's not a uh, Bob Ross painting or anything like that. This is just the way the sun is setting in the front range area of uh, the Rocky Mountains outside of Fort Collins, Colorado. It has been an absolutely gorgeous day. The temperature was expected to uh, crawl into the uh, lower 80s. I'm not sure if it got there, but from the time we woke up this morning to where we are right now, it has been absolutely picture perfect. Last week, however, much of this area was blanketed by snow, but that was gone with by uh, by the, the end of the weekend. Great crowd was here today and a lot of people excited to see Boise State for the first time in Mountain West Conference play. And you see that 
that uh, little sliver, that little palette of blue and orange that's tucked away in the north side of the uh, the stands here at Hughes Stadium. Sunny Lubick Field, I might add, here at Fort Collins. Just great, great day. Great day for Boise State's offense. 643 total. They had 476 at halftime. And that's better than their season average. And they've got another touchdown with D.J. Harper getting into the end zone. And that pushes the Broncos north of 60. A couple of different numbers, too, on the offensive line. Regardless, they're still effective, and Harper's able to find his way into the end zone. Well, they have a very formidable and experienced front line when you're talking about Potter and Joe Kellogg and Corey uh, Wyardi is uh, seeing time because Bird, the, uh, the starting center, has been bothered by injury for the past month. Uh, Chuck Hayes, Charles Leno, and they've got a good group of sophomores that have also been in at various times throughout the course of the season playing together as if they'll be the next group that will move, move up in unison to take over the, uh, the, the senior guys up front. And you don't see much drop-off anymore uh, between the, the front unit and the second unit because of the experience they've gotten. Well, well, this is what success does is we see the two plays in 10 yards and only a half minute of time possession here in our Jeep drive summary. When you establish a winning program, and, and, and let's, let's go back a little bit, about 10, 12 years, uh, we, we talk about... We, we, we talk about the success that the Boise State program has had as we see Harper go the distance here on this run. Really, a lot of it was because of fake plays and the people played hard and just, you know, they had the mission. Now, over the last five, six years, blue chip players have found their way to Boise. And so now it's a situation where the standard is quite high. And so the replacements, you know, of course they're sweating it out, but the guys that they have to replacement are, are no longer just, you know, the farm guys from, say, uh, you know, from Idaho Falls or from Pocatello. You know, they're from Los Angeles. They're from Baltimore. They're from, you know, they're from the southeast. And so as a result of that, it continues, it continues to be successful year in and year out. And the kick is taken by Lee Club. And again, Colorado State's not going to get good field position on a kickoff return. You saw J uh, DJ Harper just a moment ago. He is our sub of the game brought to you by Subway. Visit us for your catering needs. Subway, eat fresh. To follow up on your point, while they have been able to extend their recruiting emphasis in, in areas nationally, uh, they have not lost the character that blue collar element of the program and there is a Bronco who was hurt on the field and did not get up and that is Kyrie Marshall a backup defensive end from Phoenix Arizona and you never like to see the trainers uh, working on a knee in that way but what I say losing the, the culture of what Boise State football is they're very proud yeah. in that area that it is a blue collar program that there are very very deep roots uh, within the state, within the border, that the players from there are the ones who built it up. They've kind of invited the rest of the country in. But once you get there, you play the Boise State way. And there are other programs around the country that do that. There is one off to the uh, east that I will mention that, you know, Nebraska's done that. You don't lose the culture of the state of Nebraska. They've had success. Boise State has uh, followed in that line. I think there are other programs around the country have done it for a long time. Penn State would have to fall into that category being in western Pennsylvania tucked away in Happy Valley. Well, it's interesting, too, that because in this day and age now of, of high school games on ESPN and, you know, they have guys listed now at the age of 11 and 12 as potential, you know, college material. It, it's interesting that a, a, an institution like Boise State, there are no divas. You know, th there aren't divas because we're, th that, you, that doesn't work here. And I think that's that, that's what Chris Peterson has established mm -hmm. here over the last couple of years, and I and I also think one of the reasons why he's been less tempted to leave because you know he has built this into a very unique program. Chris Peterson, of course, is in his uh, sixth season at Boise State, 66 and five his overall record, and. He's, of course, made a name for himself by what he's been able to do in the postseason, winning the Fiesta Bowl in one of the greatest games of all time, defeating Oklahoma, 
the victory over TCU 17-10 in the Fiesta Bowl a couple of years ago. Last year did not make it to a BCS game, but after stumbling against uh, Nevada with the team that they thought was going to be the one that was going to be the crowning uh, moment for Boise State football, that was a very senior-laden class, like 19 or some seniors started at various times for that squad, stumbled against Nevada, they went and took care of business against Utah, and then here they are this year back in the national title hunt. I actually think, as strange as it sounds, I think that was an impressive victory because they easily could have right. looked, look, we lost $15 million, what do we care about this ball? Yep. Instead, they went in and showed what the program is about and dominated Utah. Yep, that's a good point. Pete Thomas swings it out to the left side. And that pass is complete to Matt Yem, who got a touchdown pass in the first half. And gain of eight on the play, second down and two. And Steve Fairchild knew, and we talked to him yesterday, that it was going to be a, a, a very, very tough challenge today for his team and uh, he didn't sugarcoat it and they did like the spirit of the team they liked the way uh, the, the Rams practiced the last two weeks after the disappointing loss against San Jose State and I would and they went back to the fundamentals they didn't uh, put all their eggs in the basket of trying to beat Boise State it was trying to get better fundamentally get younger players a lot of reps and as we showed on that graphic a little while ago there are a lot of younger players they really liked the last three recruiting classes you know, they've got three running backs that aren't playing this year that are sitting out that, you know, he said, we got two or three. All, all three could have had an impact this year. Now, they need to find a, a, a playmaking receiver. I don't think there's any question about that. That, I think, would allow Pete Thomas perhaps a little more confidence in this passing game to go downfield. And, and certainly I'm not going to say that, that he could have made up for 50 points, but I, I ran into Michael Sisson in the elevator. And, uh, it, you know, when you lose a player of that magnitude, it's just not what you lost on the field. I mean, this is a leader, a guy that carries you. He sets an example. He's a guy that others follow. And that injury on the punt return earlier in the season against Northern Colorado, that's, that, that, that's been a real blow for this Colorado State defense. Michael Sisson, a longtime linebacker, longtime starter, team captain. It was against Northern Colorado on a punt return, as Todd said, and uh, suffered a broken ankle. They do expect him to perhaps come back in late November for a game or two. He would not be eligible for a sixth season under a, a medical uh, redshirt uh, waiver. This is Chris Woke. Needs the 40 for the first down, and he got it. But Michael Sisson is the emotional leader. He is the team captain and somebody who's been instrumental for Steve Fairchild to get every to buy, everybody to buy into what... He's uh, trying to do here to rebuild his alma mater, and, and there he is. And They've had people that have stepped up and got an opportunity like Max Morgan. We've talked about Shaquille Barrett, the linebacker who played at UNO uh, last year. UNO dropped its program in Omaha, and he was kind of a summer find, and next thing you know, he's in the starting lineup because of the unfortunate injury. And, and, and those of you that haven't seen Michael Sisson play before, don't let that size fool you. We're five foot nine and about 2'11". This guy is a football player. Thomas down the near sideline intended for Lovett and that's uh, out of his reach. Cedric Fabus, six foot three player out of Amsterdam was covering Lovett who might be 5'8". Fabus was one of the uh, trio of uh, Boise State players who were suspended uh, the NCAA reviewed their eligibility. Cedric Fabus, uh, Ricky Chongachu, and Geraldo Boldevine, all from the Netherlands. The NCAA questioned their eligibility. And uh, only Chongachu, uh, he has not returned just yet, but the other two are playing. Thomas over the middle, that pass complete. 63-13 is our score with two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Now, obviously, Kellen Moore is out of the game. Are you surprised that Pete Thomas is still playing? No. I'm not, I'm not sure that they have an answer behind him to, to even give him a, a break or two. They have uh, MJ McPeak and another backup, uh, Garrison Grayson. Neither, I believe, has taken a snap this season. And that's been the case uh, with Pete Thomas all through last year. And one of the reasons why Nico Ranieri, who was the backup last year, uh, elected to transfer. We didn't get any uh, mop-up duty, didn't get any uh, looks early in games, and elected to leave, and uh, it's been on Pete Thomas' shoulders ever since the season opener against Colorado a year ago. Well, 
Fourth down in midfield, they're not going to punt. Fourth down and two. And the Rams need to stretch it across the 50 to the 49-yard line to keep this drive going. We should mention at this point something that I neglected to earlier. Paul Madsen, their starting tackle, is out with any injury. And Mike Arakpo and Pete Thomas is going to call a timeout. There was just one second left on the play clock. Adding to that, Mike Arakpo, as you mentioned, uh, not able to play. It was a kind of a bizarre play in the first half. Arakpo was in pursuit defensively, lost his helmet. Play continued, and uh, D.J. Harper, the running back for Boise State, hit him square in the jaw. We haven't seen him since. And he had been making a lot of plays in the first half defensively. So Matson and Arakpo both lost. Elsewhere in the top ten this week, uh, LSU and Tennessee, the uh, the Tigers, played pretty well all season long. They've had a challenging schedule, and they handled the balls. Alabama with the lead at Ole Miss. Oklahoma and Kansas might be similar to what we have uh, right about now. Uh, tough game for Kansas and uh, Turner Gill. Wisconsin, Indiana, that wasn't close. Oklahoma State uh, defeated Texas. That was a little closer than people anticipated, yeah, I think. Right. Stanford has the lead. A lot of those top uh, 10 teams playing on the road, as is Boise State. Boise State will be at home next week against Air Force. And Woke got through a seam of the block and is able to lean forward for the first down and into Boise State territory. Well, this is what you coach your young runners, and that is, is that when you get held up, keep your legs moving. Because if Woke doesn't in that situation, they don't get the first down. But he was persistent, kept his legs churning, and as a result, they're able to convert there on fourth down. First and 10 from the 47, final minute of the third quarter. The Rams work the screen, and that pass a little too hard for Joe Brown to handle. It goes off his fingertips, and that'll bring up second down. And now, Todd, as we look out uh, toward the east and the horizon, I think we're seeing more red tail lights than we are seeing uh, folks in white shirts in the stands. It was a great crowd on hand, a lot of people excited about Boise State being here, and many people in the white out to hear uh, to support Colorado State's mission to uh, white out cancer was the promotion today, teaming up with the Poudre Valley uh, Health or Hospitals Health Systems. I think Brown fans have seen enough. Bravo fans aren't going anywhere. Thomas floats it. He was hit as he threw, and uh, Joe Brown was wide open. That's incomplete. Now third down. Well, even with the second string defensive line, Pete Thomas is under duress. Pretty much all smiles down there on the Bronco side, and justifiably so. Although probably at this point, Chris Peterson's been picking at something. <laughs> <laughs> They're in Bronco territory right there now. There you go. Exactly right. Third down and 10 from the 47, 63 to 13. The shovel pass goes nowhere. Tyler Horn, he's a freshman, wrapping up. Chris Woke, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. Not much happening for Colorado State. In the third frame, all Boise State out of the locker room. 63-13 is our score. Boise State and their fans, well, they got to be happy that the Broncos, for the most part, have looked every bit like the fifth-ranked team in the country. This unlimited update is brought to you by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. Todd, I'm not sure if this is a Sprint update or a Sprint anthology because there's a whole lot to chronicle here when you go back and see what Boise State has done today in getting out to a 63-13 lead. Well, again, I come back to something that I mentioned earlier, and, and for whatever reason, I, I don't know, the, the word that's used, it's the catch word of all coaches, it's execution, but they just seem crisper. And I, again, I don't know how fast they, everybody runs, but they just seem so football fast. 
Fair catch is called for. Colorado State punted it away on fourth and two. Mitch Burrows called it in, and Boise State will have it at the 13-yard line. This is the, 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 the key play of the second half. Now, granted, Boise State was ahead 35-13, to 13, but the fake punt, 37-yard pickup by Tyler Shoemaker on the opening drive of the third quarter when it appeared as though Colorado State's defense had held the Broncos three and out, and the trick play uh, used oh so well, so often by Boise State is what really turned this thing around. That altered irrevocably any sort of momentum that the Rams had there in the third quarter. And we stretch that when we say that. <laughs> <laughs> so now the Broncos go deep into the depth chart. Drew Wright with the carry. Today's stats are brought to you by Dodge, never neutral. It really, the two things stand out to me. Here are the total yards, 644 through three quarters, and this number right here. I tell you what, if, if, and, and strangely enough, if I'm Boise State, if I get my choice between the two, I think they take the 0 for 10. Because they're used to the other. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The quarterback is Joe Southwick. And the carry is out to the 25-yard line. That's another Bronco first down. Bernard Blake with the tackle. Uh, number 39, that's Drew Wright, a 5'9", 201-pound junior from Napa, Idaho. Now, do you remember Otis Anderson? Remember O.J. Anderson? Sure, yeah. Okay. He, used to, he had a theory on speed. And this is interesting because I think, I, I think this young man might be, might be defying it. I'll make the point here after this play. I look forward to it. <laughs> His point was is that when you have numbers like 20, 21, 22, 24, uh, 32, 30, those guys can go. Those guys can really go. When you start to get numbers like 38, 39, <laughs> 45, 46, 48, he said those are he said those are third string tight end linebacker type guys. And of course I took umbrage to that because my number was 46, 46, but I didn't know what to say. He was probably right. He wore 32, did this he not? Is, this is a fast 39. Yeah, of course. Dude. Relatively speaking. Swinging it out to the backfield, or out of the backfield, and that pass is caught by Kirby Moore, who had a touchdown catch earlier today. Charles Favors in on the tackle. First and 10 line is brought to you by Remax, the sign you want, the agent you need. I think quick, just through your mind quickly, can you remember a fast 48? Or a fast 49. Now, this is this is one that really reaches by to show my age. Gail Sayers, when he was at Kansas, uh -huh. he wore 48. Oh, did he? Yeah. But uh -huh. then, of course, when he went to the Bears, 40. You know. Straight at the middle goes Drew Wright. His nickname was the Kansas Common. It's kind of interesting that when I was a kid, clear back in 1964, uh, Oregon won the NCAA track and field meet, but the guy that got seventh in the 100-yard dash, remember it was 100-yard dash before mm -hmm, it was meters, sure. mm -hmm. was a Kansas guy by the name of Gail Sayers. Is that right? Who also was a, a, a 20, I believe, almost 25-foot long jumper. Terrific athlete. Yeah, <laughs> like I needed to say that. Anybody that's right. My youngest son, I said, do me a favor. I said, look up YouTube and, and take a look at some runs by Gail Sayers. And he came back and said, geez, Dad, you're right. <laughs> this guy can play. You think? Now, I know the, the folks in Kansas like to claim it, but he is an Omaha That's guy. That's right. No, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. I knew that. That's so, absolutely right. Kind of fighting words there. And, very, and it's still a very temperamental, uh, uh, touchy topic with the people in Nebraska because he got away from Bob Devaney. And I'm not sure, in retrospect, that he, that he made a great decision in terms of what professionally. I get it, the Bears in five years. But Kansas City offered him more money. And remember, he would have been there for their Super Bowl years. You know, with Lynn Dawson, Otis Taylor, and Al. And uh, I wonder if he ever second guessed that. Probably not. I think to be a legend in Chicago might have a little more cachet than being a legend in Kansas City. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Good point. Would you rather be a Cub or a White Sox? You know? Well, White's having a pretty good uh, go of it here. Running the ball, they're not allowing Southwick to go downfield with it through the air. Bernard Blake with another tackle for Colorado State. Another first down for the Broncos. The ball at the 45-yard line. Boise State 5-0 coming into this game. 
Ranked fifth in one poll, sixth in the other. The BCS poll will be coming out very, very soon. And you would imagine that the numbers would be very similar. And you would hope, being a Mountain West person, that they might be a little bit better and would climb higher as the season goes on. And certainly there might be some movement. Pitching it to right. And he's near the first down. He needs the 35. Take a listen to this. Pads are still popping as the uh, plays continue on in the fourth quarter here. Max Morgan, Marcus Shaw. Fun to be young and resilient. To be able to take those human sandwiches, collisions, and just bounce <laughs> right up. I'm envious, I tell you. First and 10 from the 35. All right, probably doesn't get this much work in practice. He spun down. No gain on that play. Sha Shaquille Barrett made the stop. And let's check in with Roger Bailey. Guys, once we got on the conference call with Coach Peterson and his staff on Thursday, probably the one thing that stuck out to me, and I think it stuck out to all of us, was the continuation of him working. Uh, he, made, he made reference to him going to spring practices in Oklahoma, and he said, if I can get an opportunity to learn from Coach Stoops, Coach Brown, these guys down in Texas, these guys in LSU, I'm always learning, so therefore I can always teach. So it's very impressive that he's putting an offense and a defense on the, on the field that is impressing the BCS, impressing the conference, but yet he is building a program. Remember, this program was only around for the last 14 years, putting a program that he can be proud of. That's right, Roger. What uh, struck me as the ball is carried to the 30-yard line, that's a pickup of five, is that he went to Oregon, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. And, and two things. One, that... that Wait, take it out. Corey Wyarty is called for the holding uh, against Boise State. Uh, the thing that struck me about that, going to Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and, and Oregon, is that he came back and said, you know what, there, there's nothing that we're doing that is all that special. We haven't have it figured out, and they're all trying to catch up to us. Everybody's got their own system in place. It works for them. The other thing that struck me is he must be going down the phone book because he got to the O's. Next uh, next spring break, perhaps he'll be going to the N's or to, uh, you know, to, the, or to the P's and, and Q's and R's and well, down the right. Well, one of the other things that's impressive with regards to that as Roger was talking about it, is the idea that you have so many head coaches now that uh, I, I don't know I don't know if it's arrogance being self-assured or the captain of the ship, but the idea that it's my way or the highway, you know, obviously he's the leader and everybody knows that, but but he's he's still willing to learn something new that there isn't something different. Now with a new quarterback, see how things changes next year when he doesn't have Kellen Moore. Or the cer certain ways that he approaches things. He tweaks things in a certain way. And I think that speaks volumes about him in terms of his willingness to learn, as Roger pointed out. Third down and 13. And we may not see a pass the rest of the uh, the game from the Broncos. Let's bring Roger back in. Todd, you know what impressed me a little bit more than that is, yes, I think it was a lot about X's and O's, but I think it goes a long way of how do you handle these kids. Remember, as these kids come in, they're always 18 and 22 years old, and, and we as human beings and coaches and everything, we're getting older. So I think there's a relationship that he is learning. How does Coach Stoops, how does uh, Les Miles, Mac Brown, how do all these guys across the country deal with this ever-changing Twitter, ever-changing Facebook? To me, that is the biggest problem that he has to address outside of X's and O's. I don't know what you guys' thoughts are, but that this world, what Coach Peterson said, this world is a lot different than it was 20 years ago. Excellent point. Fourth down and 12 here. And Boise State's just content to, to try and let this clock wind down as quickly as it possibly can. And they come up short there to turn the ball over on downs, and Colorado State will have it. First down and 10 from the Ram 29-yard line. We'll take a break, and we'll come back with more from Fort Collins right after this on the mound. The delivery of the game is brought to you by Chicago Connection, a pizza-changing experience to play in the second quarter. Crockett Gilmore, the tight end, took the... Uh, Backward pass for Pete Thomas and Joe Brown, the fullback, was all by himself. Could have walked in from 10 yards out. That's our delivery of the game. Colorado State has the football. 7.41 left to play in this one, which has long been decided. 63-13 is our score. Boise State just turned the ball over on downs. Working with the carry is brought down after a nine-yard game out near the 40-yard line. Boise State offensively. 
has reached the 700 yard mark in total offense, running 76 plays, 712 yards. Is that close to 10 yards per play, Todd? I was about to say, I wanted to see where your math was because it wasn't quite 10 yards. I wanted to see quickly if you're going to do that. <laughs> Gain of nine for Woke. And Pete Thomas does remain the quarterback. That pass intended for T.J. Borky. He had, it on, had a hand on the ball, but then got separated from it, and that'll bring up third down and one. Lee Hightower with this play defensively. You know, as I look at the numbers for Colorado State on the field, they're still playing primarily their starters. But Boise State, Borky just couldn't bring it in. And uh, as a result, third and short, however, certainly felt like they had a free play. Boise State led 21 to nothing after the first quarter, 35-13 at halftime. Third down and one, and the first down, and a lot more. This is Woke sprinting through the Boise defense and pushed out at the 30-yard line. 32-yard pickup. Travis Stanaway, safety, one of Boise State seniors, finally pushed him out of bounds. Good pull and a nice job by Richburg, the center, to erase the man in front of him, enabling Woke to get to the middle and cut to the outside and get that additional yardage down to the 33. And Todd, after 0 for 10 on third down conversions, that's CSU's first conversion on third. Woke again, shifting back to the middle. And a gain of about nine yards, maybe 10 on the play. So Colorado State is trying to finish strong here. Coming up next for the Rams, they'll be at UTEP out of conference. But remember, UTEP is part of Conference USA. And the two uh, conferences, the Mountain West and uh, CUSA, merged on the football side. That, that merger, by the way, may take effect next year, but in all likelihood, it's uh, something that'll be probably uh, cleaned up and polished in time for 2013. Loss of a yard on this carry by Woke. Colorado State has a road trip to UNLV at the end of the month, then a bye week on November 5th. The Rams have three of their last four at home. Beg your pardon. No, no, that's fine. I, I was about to say, I, I'm surprised that we haven't seen much of Derek Good. Remember, mm. the last couple of games, they said that they really felt that they had three backs that could contribute. We saw Carter earlier, and now it's been almost, almost all woke here from about the second quarter on. Three backs who could contribute, but Steve Fairchild told us that one of the disappointments of this year is that he does not have a featured back. And Woke is turned away rudely. Needed a yard, didn't get it, may have lost a couple and a couple of marbles along the way. That was Hightower delivering the blow. Had a little Bob Sanders in and had a run at it coming from safety, and they went helmet to helmet. I tell you what, that's a good feeling as a safety to come up and drop a runner or a receiver like that. Loki's phone is ringing. Loss of two, fourth down and three, four and a half to play. Next week, Boise State plays Air Force. That will be on the blue turf. Boise State, unless it's defiant, will not be in all blue. That pass is incomplete. It was intended for T.J. Borky, but he fell while running his pattern and stumbled, and the ball whistled past him, and Colorado State turns it over on downs. Decent drive, comes up empty, and Boise State will have it when we come back to the mountain in a moment. AT&T and Verizon charge you extra for going over two gigabytes of data. T-Mobile slows down your data speed. With Sprint, you don't get charged extra and you don't slow down. And you get unlimited data, text, and calling to any mobile for only $79.99. The best unlimited plan wins. Make the most of unlimited data with a brilliant screen on a pencil-thin phone. Introducing the Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. Character means staying humble even when the lights are shining and, and being able to keep your mind on the task at hand. Character to me is just leading by example. 
One of my coaches growing up always described the character as being who you are when no one else is watching. Being consistent with your message, being, being a constant role model, and being someone people will trust. Character is carrying yourself well, being respectful to everyone. Craving some fresh new taste that'll excite your taste buds? Then get down to Old Chicago today for our new homemade creations. We're serving up two new made-from-scratch pizzas, the artisan top of tender slow-roasted beef, and the individual ultimate with Italian sausage and grilled veggies. Or go light with our new Greek salad with artichokes and juicy oven-roasted chicken. New homemade creations only at Old Chicago. Eat, drink, be yourself. After we wrap up things here in Fort Collins, stay tuned for Mountain Sports Report. Marius Payton, Ted Sundquist, and Reggie Rivers will get you caught up on all of today's Mountain West action. With Todd Christensen and Roger Bailey, I'm Bill Dolman. Welcome back to Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins. Uh, Ram kind of hiding right now, a little sheepish, shall we say, after taking a look at the scoreboard and seeing uh, his team behind 63-13 to 13, with 4-13 left to play in this game. Todd, one thing I want to get to and just mention uh, in regards to these Rams, and it, it's something that should be talked about, you know, as not as filler in a blowout game, but earlier when, when things are, are still uh, in the heat of battle, if you will, and it's the, the community service that this Rams team uh, does get to that in a moment after this play. This is right on the carry, and he's seen a lot of action here in the fourth quarter, picking up uh, nearly five yards. Colorado State's players are required to make three community service appearances per year. That's every player. And that comes from the top down. Steve Fairchild as assistant coaches, and that's the tone that they set for the kind of student athletes and the character that they want in their program. And again, it, again, it shouldn't be something that we talk about at this stage of a game like this. That, that's something that should be championed. And there are so many guys who are involved in so many ways. And we've done a lot of things on the mountain with Colorado State over the years. And you see that it is something that, that the student athletes have begun to take a lot of pride in. And it's a big deal here. And passes, uh, that uh, play is good for a first down. And, of course, Paul Kowalczyk, the, uh, the athletic director, sets the tone and has done a good job. And there are good things happening at Colorado State. But that's something that I really appreciate in a coach who comes here, in here and says, we are students, we are athletes, and we are also uh, people who need to give back to the community. And they really do live by that. Well, I think it's a good thing on a lot of different levels. But one in particular is the fact that you know, most athletes, even at a place like Colorado State, athletes traditionally are self-absorbed. It's about them, it's about me, my body, my position, where I am, and all of these different things. It gives them a chance to get out of themselves a little bit and to be charitable. And I don't, I, I don't mean financially charitable, but I mean with their time and their energy. And, and, and having it required, I think, is a very good thing. And it certainly improves the quality of the life for the young people, too, as well as those that they serve. Yeah. Drew Wright uh, with his 14th carry of the game. Mm -hmm. He has more carries almost twice as many as DJ Harper. And he's surpassing him in yards. Harper does have a couple of touchdowns. But this is one of those games where Wright is uh, being the beneficiary of a big lead and making the most of his time. Second time in school history for the Broncos that they have topped the 700-yard mark in total offense. And right now they're at 726. And I can guarantee you this, if I'm number 39, and I'm not, <laughs> but I want to say that I bet that there's absolutely no way he's going to be tired. There's no way he wants to look over and tap his helmet and say, I want to get out, because you just don't get these kind of opportunities. You can see he's a little bit gassed right there. You saw him look up, <laughs> but there's no way. You know, there's no way you want to say, oh, no, no, I want to go out. I, I got it. Got it. Got to strike while the iron's hot, partner. And I'm not going to tell the Bronco Radio Network how to do its job, but doggone it, you know they've got a player of the game thing that they give out every day. I or every game, I would say, hey, give it to give it to Wright. Why not? Not too many days like this for him. Snap was bobbled by Hedrick, and that is Wright getting a first down for the Broncos. Mountain College football is brought to you by Les Schwab Tire Centers, doing the right thing since 1952. By Dodge, never neutral. Coming up in the final 90 seconds, 63 to 13. 
Boise State senior class with this victory, 44th win. The school record is 49. I believe that was set by last year's bunch. Tenth straight senior class with 40 wins. You know, I saw that stat. <laughs> that, was, that was really impressive. We talk about continued excellence. I mean, 10 straight. I mean, 40 wins now is, hey, that's 10 a year. That's unbelievable. Now they've done a 10 straight year. That, that's, that's, uh, that's improbable. There's Grant Hedrick. He's uh, one of the three quarterbacks that the Broncos use, two in backup roles, that being Southwick, the other. Yeah, Hedrick may be the quarterback of the future. He's a redshirt freshman from Independence, Oregon. I was just about to say, as we saw, as we saw more there, the guy gets player of the game constantly. Right. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. give Fort it to right. right. Sure. <laughs> and the victory formation. Decided a long time ago, 63-13. Again, Mountain College football brought to you by Dodge, never neutral. By Geico, saving people money on more than just car insurance. And by Old Chicago Restaurants, eat, drink, and be yourself. And that snap, the final snap of this game. Steve Fairchild's team, young team, learning a lesson at the hands of the fifth-ranked team in the country, a veteran squad led by Chris Peterson, who picks up his 67th win against just five losses in his sixth season as the head coach of the Broncos. Colorado State with the loss falls to three and two, one and one in Mountain West Conference play. The Broncos, by the way, have now won eight straight, dating back to last year, and are six and zero oh this year. Just quickly on that mark that was 67 and five, I thought it interesting that in the information, one of the things that they talked about, they went back to, I think it was 1899 or something like that, to see a record that was that good percentage-wise. I mean, they had to go an entire century backwards to find it. And one of the, I, I'm probably gonna misquote this. I think Walter Camp was one of the three coaches yeah. who had a record right. better than Chris Peterson. And Chris Peterson, somebody else whose name escapes me. Right. And Walter Camp, a legend of the game. All right, uh, Chris Peterson's Broncos have defeated Colorado State 63-13. Let's check in with Roger Bailey and Chris Peterson. All right, Coach, your first taste of the Mountain West Conference. You make a statement coming in on the road. How is it important for you guys to make a statement on your first road test in the Mountain West? Well, I don't know if we're trying to make a statement. We're just trying to win a game. And we're proud how our guys played. They played hard. Colorado State got that momentum at the end of half, and so it was good to come out and answer right away, and we're just proud how hard they played. Well, there were a couple of trick plays CSU played on you, and you turned around and returned the favor on that fake punt. How much of that set the tone for that second second quarter and second half? Well, we, we needed to do something right away to get some momentum back, because they certainly had it going in at halftime, and again, the kids answered and played hard. Coach, you got a little bit of uh, benefit, taste of uh, a little bit of... Uh, the best of both worlds. You get to win some football games and look at the taste of the future, look into the future a little bit. You're building a special program here. How, how much of it is, is it of an advantage for you to see both parts of that puzzle? Well, we definitely want to get our young guys involved. Right. I mean, uh, nobody has the luxury to just play old guys all the time, and they do graduate, right. but we're going to need those young guys even this year, and so it's always good to get those guys some good action. All right, Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Safe travels. Once again, our final score, Boise State 63, Colorado State 13. Welcome to the Mountain West Broncos. Specialized statistical information provided by Stats. Our next telecast is next Saturday at noon. New Mexico visits Fort Worth to take on the TCU Horn Frogs. Now for Todd Christensen and Roger Bailey, stay tuned for the Mountain Sports Report. It's starting right now.